Praying for success in Western India's cotton belt, Mandavari, who owns this land, is seeking God's protection for the harvest. More than three million farmers depend on cotton in Maharashtra state alone. Last year, 986 committed suicide here. Like Mandavari, a widow who supports a family of 13, they were deeply in debt. There was very little rain last year, so we had a marginal yield and had to use a lot of pesticide. We could not cover our expenses. We had to take a loan just to feed ourselves. India is the largest producer of cotton in the world after China, yet yields remain amongst the lowest globally. India produces just 550 kilos of lint cotton per hectare. China's figure is more than double that. In this region, farmers face rocky conditions and soil erosion, so the yield here is lower. Cotton is very susceptible to pests, so their costs have been increasing. Helping farmers cut costs and improve yields is imperative. More than 57,000 cotton-growing households in Maharashtra state now receive help through a plan supported by EFAD, the United Nations International Fund for Agricultural Development. Farmers attend training sessions held by CAME, the state government's agricultural project, supported by EFAD. Here, they learn sustainable cotton cultivation through methods developed by the Better Cotton Initiative, a global program to improve standards. The pesticide companies have convinced farmers to depend on chemicals. What they don't explain is that pesticides lose their impact when insects develop resistance. So there's little long-term benefit. The EFAD-supported project teaches them to use local leaves, including neem. Mixed and fermented, they provide a natural repellent. There's another commodity in abundance here. Dung from domestic cattle is collected to make natural fertilizer. Spraying with natural pesticide does no harm to plants or workers. Best of all, it's free. Our plants this year are so green and healthy, even though we've had little rain. Before, they would have turned yellow. Results from the first year of the program are encouraging. Each farmer increased profits by 42 percent. That's 167 U.S. dollars. The EFAD-supported project also helps them get a better price at market. The benefit is that individual farmers are often cheated in terms of the weight and the price they get at market. We've been helping them band together and sell collectively. That helps them share information and avoid being cheated. We also train them to improve the quality of their cotton. This is good for the buyers and for the farmers. Mandavari owes her creditors more than $4,000, but this year she's done well. She even hopes to turn a small profit. This year I'm hopeful. We've used low-cost spray and fertilizer, so we've brought down our expenditure. It's the end of a long, hot day, but the first harvest is in. Overall yields still depend on rainfall, which can be unreliable. But by cutting costs, Mandavari will have more money to feed and educate her grandchildren. Even the smallest savings are an answer to her prayers. <laughs>